This video was sponsored by Sequencer. It's a game-changing product that helps generate tons of great information about in-game decision-making for both baseball and softball. It's an easy-to-use web-based app that we've talked about on the channel before. When we last reviewed this product, it spat out run expectancies and lineup generation information. But since then, it's grown to dive even deeper into matchup data, right-left splits, and even aid in bunting and stealing decisions through their new matrices. In today's video, we are going to dive into all of the new changes that Sequencer has made to help coaches at any level make decisions like they do in the big leagues. Before we dive into the fun new stuff, let's take a quick second to review what Sequencer is. This bit is going to be the condensed version of the video we partnered on last year, so if you want a full guide to how Sequencer works, be sure to check out the links in the description. Anyways, Sequencer is a Monte Carlo simulation that uses historical data to estimate future performance. This same type of simulation is used in financial institutions, astrophysicists, and even the MLB. And with the help of their partner 643 Charts, they're able to access tons of historical NCAA data alongside your individual player statistics in order to provide you with a quality system to make data-driven decisions in-game. In the beginning, that looked a lot like this. An estimated average runs comparison between any different combination of your players in a lineup that you could think of. But now, it's so much more. So that's what we covered the last time we talked about Sequencer. If you have any more questions about some of Sequencer's features, or just want to understand how it works, be sure to check out the video in the description. Next, we're going to dive into how we can use Sequencer's new features. To access these new features, you will go through the same process as you did in the past although the interface has been updated a little bit since we last talked. First, you create your team's roster by clicking the option on the navigation bar. Then, you select Input NCA Data and choose In-Game. We will get to the New Matchups portion in a minute. Then, you can create what you believe your best lineup would be and run a simulation. A reminder here that Sequencer doesn't generate the best lineup for you, it simply helps estimate how different lineups you create would perform. Once the simulation is done running, this is where the new fun begins. The new options found here allow you to download PDFs of four different types of breakdowns, including run probability, run expectancy, stolen base breakevens, and bunting. Let's dive into each one of those, starting with the run probability matrix. The run probability matrix shows you the percent chance of scoring a single run in an inning for each of your individual hitter out states. The key word here is the chance to score a single run. Looking down at our matrices, you can see we have your individual batters located at the top. The outstates are your columns, and your base runner situations are your rows. The numbers inside all of these matrices are the percent chance you have to score a run when that hitter steps up to the plate in every possible situation. This is some super useful information to have as a coach. For example, if you compare Jordan to James when there are runners on first and second and one out, you can see that in that inning, you'll score a single run about 60% of the time. However, if James were to come up in that situation, you'll only score a single run 50% of the time. Seeing information like this can help lead you to make coaching decisions in real time. Now, let's jump into the run expectancy matrices. This matrix shows us the expected number of runs scored based on your individual hitter base out states. Not just the chances, but the total number of runs you can expect to score broken down by each of your hitters. You can see, for example, when Jordan steps up to the plate with no outs and the bases loaded, you're feeling pretty confident that a few runs are going to come in that inning. The benefit of using this chart alongside the previous matrices comes down to specifically to what point of the game you're in. If you're early in the game, you should be prioritizing, maximizing your scoring potential. But if it's late in the game and you are tied, you only need to shoot for that one run to take the lead. Let's replace our three hitter with the six hitter from lower down on this report, the Brule. When you're looking to score a single run with a runner on third and one out, you can count on Jordan to do that more often than not. But if De Brule is up to bat, his expected number of runs scored is lower than one, and almost 20% lower than Jordan's. Next, we will hop on over to the stolen base break evens percentage breakdown. This new sheet covers the stolen base success percentage needed to maximize your expected runs scored that inning. This layout is a little different, hosting the whole lineup on the left representing all of our columns, our outs are listed across the rows, and the separate matrices display three different base stealing situations, a runner at first, runners at first and third, and a runner at second. 
You can think of these numbers as your confidence in whoever is on the base paths to successfully steal a base with every hitter at the plate. This chart is going to be most applicable early in the game when you're still trying to maximize your runs. If you have Allen up with a runner on first and no outs, you should only attempt to steal second base if you are 80% sure that you will not be thrown out. Otherwise, you may actually be hurting your chance to maximize your run scored that inning. But if De Bruyne is at the plate, that confidence interval lowers to about 66%. So for example, if we have athlete A on first base, who has stolen 12 bases on 16 attempts this year, he has a 75% stolen base success percentage. In this situation, you would opt to steal that bag with De Bruyne at the plate because it has a higher potential to maximize the number of runs scored that inning, while you would elect to not steal that base with Allen at the plate because the chance of athlete A successfully stealing that bag doesn't help your team score as many runs as possible as compared to allowing Allen to do his thing. Now, I know there is more that goes into base stealing than that, such as a pitcher's time to the plate or the catcher's arm, but the idea is what matters. If you are 75% sure your player can safely reach second here, you would send him with one player to bat and you would not with the other. Now if we scroll down on this report we will see a similar looking but very different set of matrices. These charts show off the minimum stolen base success rate needed in order to score a single run that inning. And it's best used late in the game when a single run could be the difference between winning and losing. The layout of these charts is the same as above, but it's telling a very different story again. As you'll notice, these percentages are going to be, for the most part, lower than what you saw above in the maximizing run matrices. And that's because this chart's goal is to show you when it's best to steal as the game is coming down to the wire. Looking back at our last example, if your goal is only to score one run this inning, and De Bruyne is at the plate with no outs and a runner on first, your confidence in your runner success rate only needs to be just above 50-50, at 60%. However, with Allen at the plate, you would need a higher percentage confidence in your runner even if there was another out that inning. As you can see here, you need to be real confident in your runner in a first and third situation no matter who's up or how many outs there are. And lastly, of course, we have our bunting breakdowns. These charts show the run probability change in the event that a batter is able to successfully lay down a bunt. You'll notice that many of these situations result in a negative effect on total runs, even with the successful bunt. And that's consistent with what other modern analytics have shown us about bunting. In these charts, we see every batter broken up into their own matrices, each labeled with zero outs on the left and the common bunting base running situations on the right. If we look at James, for example, with a runner on second base, if he were to lay down a successful bunt, that would increase your probability to score a single run that inning by six points. That's pretty good. However, if we jump over to Allen, we are most likely better off leaving the bat in his hands, since even a successful bunt by him results in a negative three run probability change as compared to him swinging away. If we pop down to the bottom of this sheet, we will see again a new comparison of how a successful bunt would affect the run probability of maximizing your runs each inning by all of your different hitters in your lineup. Like I said before, in terms of maximizing your ability to score runs each inning, bunting will almost always hurt that total. So you should look to avoid it for the most part earlier in the games. But just because it's bad for run expectancy doesn't mean it's bad for run probability. If you are down one run, you absolutely should bunt with some hitters in your lineup. In this sheet helps show you how a successful bunt will affect the total projected runs for that inning. Phew, all right. We made it through all of the awesome new tools Sequencer has to offer. Just to review, Sequencer not only allows you to make better informed decisions on the best lineups you can put together, but it also can help you make real-time coaching decisions on when the best times are to bunt to increase your odds of scoring a run, as well as what situations you should steal in. And it does all of this by using data. How cool is that? That's not even to mention that Sequencer also gives you the ability to dive deeper into these reports by allowing you to extrapolate this information for each of your individual players as they match up to the exact pitcher you will be facing that day, or simply just right and left splits for the season. It's all really cool stuff. So what are my main takeaways from the Sequencer update? The goal of Sequencer is to give coaches the power to make informed decisions by using data just like the way coaches are doing it in the big leagues. And doing a little extra work made pretty easy through the Sequencer app. Prior to each game, you can be armed with a tool to let data drive your decisions to up your chances of scoring runs.